Hello, my name is John, and today we'll be reading Reshaping World Trade After Tariffs by Peter Morrissey, Washington Times, June 27, 2018. President Trump pressuring Western allies on defense spending and trade can be viewed in two ways. Wrongly, detractors and academia, the media, and on Capitol Hill paint him as reckless, ignorant, and dangerous. Rather, he is a leader not always lost in the details or burdened by history, who instinctively understands arrangements that bind together the United States, Europe, and partners in the Pacific have long imposed unfair burdens on the American people and are rotting to the point of collapse. NATO and defense commitments in the Pacific, the World Trade Organization, and the EU and NAFTA have been sold to Americans and Europeans as promoting security and prosperity, but those don't. China's surrogate, North Korea, has nuclear weapons that threaten Seattle. Russia is accomplishing all kinds of mischief, and economic growth has been terrible in the West for two decades. China poses an existential threat with mercantilist policies designed to seize leadership in high technology from the United States and apply those capabilities to building a navy and other military assets that can dominate the Western Pacific, project power globally, and undermine Western democracy. Import restrictions and a trade surplus with the United States are central to China's strategy because a large protected domestic market is critical for establishing high technology businesses when better products are available in the West. It takes dollars to buy foreign companies to completely fulfill China's vision and finance influence peddling through foreign aid and its Silk Road global infrastructure initiative. Instead of supporting Mr. Trump's efforts to finally compel Beijing to honor the letter and spirit of its WTO obligations, Australia and Japan merrily sell resources and technology to the Chinese industrial juggernaut. The Europeans would rather heckle Mr. Trump on steel tariffs and insist we continue to negotiate fruitlessly with an intransient dictatorship. None of our allies spends nearly what we do on defense, and when things get tough on our largest allies, Japan and Germany, refuse to modify obsolete post-war constitutions, and that compels American men and women to do the fighting and take the casualties. Japan expected the United States to gain release of citizens kidnapped by North Korea, and Germany lobbied hard against providing Ukraine with adequate weapons to dislodge Russia from the Crimea and eastern territories. Part of the problem is that Japan and Germany practice a kind of mercantilism we rail against in China, and taking a hard stand would put the magnifying glass on their hypocrisy. After China, Japan and Germany enjoy the largest bilateral trade surpluses with the United States. So distorting and self-defeating are their protectionist behavior that Japan has been hampered by chronically slow growth for two decades, and Germany's selfish export surplus growth strategy and Europe's single currency imposes double-digit unemployment across the Mediterranean and have inspired a populist government in Italy that may ultimately ultimately leave and blow apart the European Union. Mr. Trump's critics sophomorically chant from outdated undergraduate textbooks, free trade always maximizes efficiency and growth. Well, if that is true, why are Italy, Greece, Iberia, and much of the interior United States in such sorry conditions? What Mr. Trump lacks and and needs to articulate is not what's wrong, 
That's plain enough for anyone with eyes to see. But what America should do next. Tariffs are short-term, crude, and disruptive instruments, and if China won't negotiate and reform to conform its WTO obligations and the simple norms of fairness, then the United States must be prepared to impose a post-World Trade Organization system of managed trade. Impose is the correct word, because President Xi Jinping has firmly established he will not make meaningful concessions, and past Chinese promises have proven worthless anyway. If European growth continues lower than a snake's belly, its social support system, include caring for its aging population, will become impossible. A failing European Union may well die a destabilizing and messy death. America should throw Britain a lifeline as it leaves the European Union. No comprehensive post-Brexit arrangement with a German-dominated dying continent will work. And it's time to contemplate genuine free trade with other EU members smart enough to bolt too. Only then can we compel Germany and Japan to pay up and take real risks in the defense of liberty, and finally open their markets to Asia, so Asia, Europe, and America can grow together again. This video is a production of the School of the White Crane. My name is John Brooker, and you could communicate with me through commentary on this video or through my Gmail listed here. Please share this video with family and friends and on social media. May God Richly bless you.